Right, the, the time is 4.01. Uh, can I ask all officers and guests to turn off their cameras? You should turn on your camera and microphone when you speak, but please turn them back off again afterwards. Could I please ask Democratic Services to mute everyone and begin recording, please? Okay. Um, Pranam da, Kroisodi Kavadrod, Dial Kambaub Amdod. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Regeneration and Public Protection Scrutiny Committee on Tuesday, the 21st of September 2021. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and may be broadcast by the Authorities Internet site. The images and sound recording may also be used for training purposes within the Authority. Agenda item one apologies for absence. We have Councillor Gareth Lewis and Hilary Hopkins, Chair. Thanks, Matthew. Um, I, I'm going to have to give my apologies at um, 5.15. I have to leave. Um, could somebody chair for me? I think we call it Matthew. Would that be right if I if I leave early? Yes, you would be, yes. Yeah. Uh, is anybody like to chair? Yeah, happy to do that, Chair. Chair, I second, I second that as well. Have Malcolm, thank you. Uh, and I also want to give apologies for Councillor Kevin Gibbs. OK, thank you. Um, is is that noted, Matt? Yes, Chair, I'll note that now. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Agenda item two, declarations of interest. No. OK, agenda item three, issues arising from the end of the European funding. Um, I'd like to invite Deputy Leader Arlene Owen to present this agenda item. Thank you, Chair. Um, as as members will will be more than aware, um, then the local authority, Merth Taylor County Borough Council, has benefited hugely um, from the structural funds associated with the allocation uh, from the European Union, which have been based on um, on uh, funding areas deprivation to to to, to bring up uh, an equal standard of. Um, uh, of economic equity throughout the uh, the union. Obviously, with with Brexit, then everything uh, everything has changed, and the whole way that we currently use European funding, not just Merthyr Tydfil County Borough Council directly, but the Welsh government, um, the devolved governments, the UK government, and external partners, is about to change. Now, what this report um, is doing today is taking you through the some of the uh, some of the information about historically the amount, quantity, and type of funding that we've accessed through the European programs. We're going to look at the uh, current existing European funding, which we still utilise in, and we're going to touch upon some of the implications. For, um, for Wales, the region, for Merthyr Tydfil County Borough Council of the loss of this European funding and the considerations that will need to be taken to actually put replacement funds in place. So without going too much into the wider argument, um, we've got Chris Long, we've got, uh, we've got Deb Newton, um, and we've got Zoe Thomas here with us. Uh, between us all, uh, that covers the full spectrum of the European funds uh, from ESF to ERDF to the transnational funds that Merthyr has been successful in accessing. Um, so we'll take you through the report um, and you can see the actual quantum of money that we're talking about and the types of activity that we currently fund. Uh, and then we'd really appreciate the debate about what that means for specifically Merthyr Tidville. And perhaps the next steps that we need to take as, uh, um, as a regeneration service and the type of considerations that you need to take as elected members. So if I can hand over to Chris and the team um, and we'll just run you through the report. Up to you where you want to play, Chair, whether you want to stop at each section or whether you want us to go through the report and then take questions. Happy either way. 
yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm happy to just go through the report and then, and then questions if, if that's okay with everyone. Yeah. Chris, okay. over to you. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. And afternoon, everybody. So, um, what I'm going to do, um, I think I'll insert the scene quite nicely then in terms of the, the position of this report. Um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to skim through the pages, pick out probably the most pertinent points that, um, kind of form our position really uh, in terms of pulling this report together. Um, so Alan's alluded to Brexit has changed dramatically and you know, words reviews in this report are momentous, right? uh, significant impact, uh, not only on the political landscape, but actually on our operating model right? in terms of you know, the reliance on European funding and what that's given, I think, the local authority uh, and Wales over 20 years of European funding, right? So it is um, uh, is a first, the first of three reports, and I think a 3.6. We just touch on uh, that particular point. It's the first I'll focus on issues arising as a result of the NDU funding. So it's the first of three reports that we wanted to give a real clear overview in terms of where we are currently in terms of um, our reliance on the funding. So table 4.4, right, gives that history, doesn't it, really? And when you look at some of the dates in there and some of those programmes, God alive, you know, you think back as far as 2002, you know, um, in terms of some money that's come into the local authority and some of those projects we remember, we remember Deb so, so well, you know, in 2003, the Neighbourhood Learning Centre, God alive, you know, um, European Social Fund, and I, I remember Deb, but you know, we, we still got some of the scars for those programmes, right? And it was a hard old world, isn't it? European money, right? The legislation bestowed on getting European funding from the Welsh European Funding Office. And, you know, it's been on a, gr a great journey, really, in terms of some of the some of the experiences of supporting local people into work, you know, and it's great to see now some of those people still in work, Deb, right as a result of some of some of the programs that we initiated so whole plethora there of uh programs on page five right scrolling down really into some wider programs the table two uh, members uh, 4.5 really where it wasn't just the local authority in those days had european funding basically esf which is the the people programs european social fund is about people, people into work, jobs, and you had the complementary European Regional Development Fund, which is the capital programme. So two programmes working side by side. And, and I think there in table 4.5, table two, um, there was a mix of European and capital programmes there that the whole county borough benefited from in those early objective one days leading into convergence. Um, so um, I think on compiling this report, and um, you know, I'd like to thank Deb, Paul, Paul Davis for, for for another report, and and Zoe for actually detailing out you the impact and um, the position in terms of where we are now at five point one, because five point one really is the programmes we have currently live within the local authority, right? And that constitutes, in effect, um, our employability programme and support to uh, local people and actually getting them in, 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 into work. Um, and obviously, as members will be aware, um, we've, we, we were and are still, still very successful in European transnational programmes, really, where uh, we learn from our European partners across the continent, really, in terms of good and some uh, not so good practice in terms of learning from our European counterparts. Um, I want to conclude, if I can, off, on 5.3, Chair, um, because um, I think really that spells out, um, I think, what scrutiny comes to need to consider as the potential negative impacts, right? Um, I won't go through those bullet points, um, but we really are faced with some dilemma here. Um, and that's not just from a Merthyr perspective, 
that's uh, an, a national perspective, but obviously um, we can see quite clearly how how much we've relied on it for 20 years and the impact it'll have if there's no alternative funding source in place by the time the European programmes close. Um, so moving on, 5.5, and we've highlighted this in bold. Um, disappointingly, uh, the Council, uh, not only ourselves, um, are still yet to, to really understand um, clearly what alternative programmes out of UK shared prosperity is going to look like. We've seen kind of glimpses over the last six months on what it could look like through programmes called um, the Community Renewal Fund and the sister programme called Leveling Up. And we have submitted applications uh, that we should have heard back from UK Treasury in August, but we still yet to hear back from UK government. So we've had glimpses of opportunities, um, but not to the scale that we're delivering, delivering at, at the moment. Um, Chair, I think um, I think that kind of sums up our position in terms of the programmes currently at the moment and the the liability we have in terms of our staff and potential redundancy uh, values bestowed on on the seventy two. Um, I think moving to where we want to be, um, obviously, we we cannot switch. We don't. We 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 know we're in a position where we can switch our tap off, right? We have become reliant on it, um, and you know we. It's gonna it's gonna be a colossal effort. I feel to get a program in place to mirror the programs that that are currently being offered by the local authority to local people in terms of in terms of employability. Um, I think. Um, we have um, a new economic recovery plan uh, being developed um, and that's predicated still on inward investment and jobs for local people, right? So that's a really important statement that we, we always rely on, we feel, European programmes or sister European programmes delivered out to Welsh Government or UK to support the hardest to reach people in into work that 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 that's without that's without without doubt. Um, I think there's a couple of things we need to do. We need to do next with scrutiny support. I think um, I think we from scrutiny we 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 probably need to raise awareness of the risks through cabinet and through for council. So we'd like to get a view from scrutiny members on that. Um, that was one thing I think we feel as officers we really, really need to need to look at. We need to probably um, share the information across all council departments as well, right, in terms of making sure we do have the right information um, uh, and we're analysing the internal internal view on what we what the current picture is. Um, we we feel as a team as well, whilst this is inward looking. We probably need to look externally as well to um, our partner agencies, being Job Centre Plus, Careers, the College, um, and there's probably others that sit on European pockets of European funding. So we probably need to do that external view and mapping, so we can probably bring a holistic report back to scrutiny, perhaps at the second report. So we've got a complete picture in terms of Merthyr's position and reliance on the funding. So these are some of the things we recommend for members to to consider. Um, and I think, you know, I, I think as a summary, just giving a little bit of detail to Alan's overview, I think that's probably it about it, um, Chair. I, I don't know whether Deb Newton uh, wants to come in and add anything that I might have missed, Deb. Thanks. No, I, I, you know, I think I think the report is quite sobering. Um, you know, to, to to look at what what the gap um could be moving forward, and I think what what we've done over the last twenty years is is developed a unique service that 
we can more or less support anyone who needs support. Um, and, you know, there's there's alternative provision out there offered by our colleagues in DWP and, you know, their contracting um, services out. But the, the, the issue with all of that moving forward is there's eligibility criteria. And I think that's that's our, our, our unique selling point um, moving forward. If we would be able to design something of a hybrid model that encompasses all people. Um, and I think that's where our service area is uh, is at this current point in time. But um, no, Chris, I, th I think I think you covered everything. Yeah, thanks, uh, thanks, Chris. If I can, uh, if I can just sum sum that up, then uh, there's three there's three distinct elements for me, Chair, with this. Uh, there's ERDF, which is the European Capital Finance, which Merthyr has uh, uh, has been very successful. Uh, we totally remodelled over two phases the whole town centre. Uh, to, to I think everyone's benefit from ERDF, and we had economic benefit from that. There's the people element of the equation, uh, which is quite vast, and the work that um, that Deb's been doing and her team, which also um, which also strays into education and the world of Chris Hall, and there's a whole relationship and best practice uh, exchange with our European neighbours, with uh, with leader and the transnational programmes. So the three very important components. The only way forward, I think, for us is to be certain, as Deb just said, is what a new model looks like for uh, for Merthyr. Now, I know, Chair, you you were heavily involved with uh, with ourselves in looking at some of the proposals with the uh, Community Renewal Fund, and I think we need to we need to expedite our energies now in looking at the new Merthyr model, which fits into a regional model, which is supported by the Welsh Government model. Um, and I think if we concentrate on that, rather than um, rather than just thinking woe is me with the with the loss of this money, then that'll be that'll be effort well well spent. Um, I think what we have seen from central government with the community renewal fund is they totally underestimated the uh, the scale of the architecture they need in place to deliver a UK wide model, and it's just totally overwhelmed them. So I think if we can offer some local solutions, I think going forward into the Shared Prosperity Fund, then um, UK government will be very interested in using that new architecture. Thank you very much. Thanks, Al. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Deb. Um, yeah, it's a great report, but you know, it is a little depressing reading, I have to admit. Um, I'm going to open it up to questions now. Scott? Thanks, Jay. Yeah, um, I suppose the only question I've got is they're looking at the tables, um, tables four and five on page um, page eight, where it shows obviously that certain projects have got a, you know, a, a, a basically an end date, but then underneath them, they've got project closure until December 22. Now, does that mean that the projects are already currently closed and they're not looking to reopen until then, or is that something completely different because then does that render those null and void um those end dates null and void there as i i, I take that um question okay. chair um basically um you'll have an operational end delivery date which is the first dates that you see here but then for all european social fund um provision there will be a period of project closure um, due to the extensive audit processes and completion of final claims that need to be submitted. Um, so what you will see, there will be delivery staff in situ for like some of the dates, like the 30th of September 2022, but then a core nugget of staff then implementing project closure to ensure that project information is archived appropriately to minimise any clawback risk of grant um, should there be audits in a couple of years' time. So it's actually a closure phase with a with a smaller team. Brilliant, thanks. Is it a uh, little, thanks, Dave. Chris? A little bit more as well of that, and it's like, it's a good question actually, because it's, it's kind of chicken and egg this at the moment, because we, we know how many staff could be affected and we know what the redundancy bill is, right? 
So for a lot of the staff associated, they've been on rolling contracts for a long, long time. Because right, European funding has been with us kind of 15, 20 years, and there's some staff in Situ Deb that have been rolling for probably blocks of two or three years for 15 years, yeah, right? Correct. Which has accumulated then the fact of very skilled individuals that know the client group very, very well, and they know, know employability service very, very well, right? And that's great as a, as a service provider. The downside of it now, though, is, is because the end is in sight, there's a fear that staff will leave the authority right and you know we can't we can't blame them right on, on one hand it's difficult because deb's got to close programs down but on the if there's a if there's a plus side is it great that those those people will get continued employment right and also you know in effect they'll reduce our redundancy payment right but the balance for deb is is to close programs down right and we haven't quite worked through what that means yet in pra in practicalities so i know that risk hasn't come out in in true technicolor but i think off offline i think we're going to do a little bit of work just to ease the pain on this otherwise we'll, we'll when we'll end up with a, a high redundancy bill i don't think no, i think staff are far far more savvy now these days in terms of what they need to do to safeguard themselves in their livelihood Right, but we are talking about a very loyal group group of staff here, a very very loyal staff, and that's the disappointing bit really with it all, Chair. Thanks, Chris. Alan, do you want to come in? Yes, please, Chair. You can't you can't underestimate the the skill involved in closing a program down. Um, looking at uh, at Zoe Thomas, uh, Zoe was. Um, uh, Manage the close down of the of the town centre programs, both in the lower valley and in uh, and in Merthyr, Merthyr itself, and the amount of sheer effort and work that went into that was uh, was absolutely colossal. So there's there's a lot of sort of skill and capacity balancing which we'll need to look at, um, because you'll have the development of alternative programs, you'll have um, the liaison with the various partners in developing those programs and you'll have the close down all going on at the same time, uh, which is something that we're very aware of. Thanks, Alan. Um, is there any other questions? Any? No, I have a, I have a couple. Um, on page all right, on 5.3, it says 72 staff. Um, is, is that just council staff? Um, do we have any indication about key partners we're working with? How many staff they will likely to lose within Merthyr as well? Deb, that's all our 72, isn't it? That's our 72. 72 is, is purely um, local authority staff. Yeah, but that obviously there's there's DWP partners wrapped up in, in you know, communities who are communities who are plus delivery. Um, so, yeah, it's just a snapshot of what what affects us corporately say so great in in terms of the next report could could that be something that could be brought in you know um highlighting all the key partners and what they're likely to lose as well yeah i i, th I think as i um as i mentioned um earlier chair i think through the economic growth partnership uh we need to agenda that as a key piece of work yeah. that um well we're hoping that the agencies are carrying out similar exercises to ourselves and they have mapped out the number of people, the value, the impact and the loss. Um, so, yeah, I'm hoping that in the second report we can give a flavour really realistically of how many agencies yeah, will be affected by the loss of European funding. OK, thanks, Chris. In in terms of the levelling up and the Shared Prosperity Fund, there's, there's no indication. I know the CRF, as we chatted to, chatted about there's no indication on that there's nothing on them no indication whether this is going to go welsh government uk government nothing no nothing at all no we've, um we're in a position at the moment that we um that we we, we can't get any meaningful contact with um with officials in um in the community renewal fund so we're totally in the dark obviously it was one year funding i should have wear chair um so all the profiles that we submitted, they um, they now um, they now down the down the shoot basically. Yeah, it's extremely worrying. You know, I'm all you know the project I'm involved in already three months behind 
the timeline I submitted and it's, it's not looking like coming anytime soon. So then and to finish it within the deadline they set is it's just not achievable. So who knows? Finger in here. I don't know. All right. Um no other questions. Any comments? Mal? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Yeah, just comment really. Um yeah, I think we all share your disappointment in, in in the lack of fun, you know, the loss of all this funding. I think Merthyr Tibbill probably as much as anywhere else in the country has benefited from this European money. It's made a massive difference to the town centre, to the villages, the whole of the borough. So how are we going to refund this or replace this money? I don't know. It makes me despair. Um, but yeah, thanks to Alan and Chris and Zoe and the, and Deb and all the team for all that they've done with this money and the good use they've made for all these projects over the years because it's made a tremendous difference to the borough. So I'm normally a half glass full, half glass full empty guy, but I'm I'm half empty on this one. I just can't see where we're going to get uh, replacement for this funding from. That's Malcolm. Uh, Scott? Yeah, I, I just want to sort of um, highlight my sort of gratitude, I suppose, and appreciation for all of those projects that have resulted in obviously significant qualifications and jobs that have come from them. Um, and, you know, through the European funding that we've had, it's, it's been you know substantial to see some of the some of the results that have come from it from you know through support from the council as well. So, yeah, I take my hat off to the team as well. Thanks, Scott. Um, yeah, I have to reiterate what um, Malcolm and Scott have just said. Um, having worked in the third sector within Merthyr for the last 18 years, lifetime, um, you know, it's, it's always been great to, to to work with colleagues in working skills for adults and, you know, all these different other employability schemes and, you know, I can refer in and know where to go, but, you know, losing these will be a, a massive loss to Merthyr, so um, fingers crossed that something will come up soon. I mean, all you guys will be all over it if it does. Anyway, um, okay. Um, moving on. Uh, item agenda four: Merthyr Tidwell Recovery Transformation and Improvement uh, Economic Recovery Theme. Um, I'd like to ask Alan to introduce this again, please. Mm, okay, thanks, Chair. Um, if I take you back to <laughs> similar to the last, um, similar to the last item, Chair. If I take you back to the journey we've gone on with um, with the working life economic recovery theme um, to where it is now, from um, um, from the perspective of development, <clears throat> if you go back post COVID, which was a, a very different place uh, now, we were we were looking at um, at a two track. Um, development around economic regeneration to take our position to somewhere um, quite higher than it was before. We we did some work with a company called The Means um, in relation to an uh, uh, an economic uh, economic strategy for Merthyr um, and simultaneous to that we were also working with um, with the, a company called The Urbanists uh, Welsh Government and Transport for Wales in creating a town centre master plan, which is the, the third iteration of the master plan for the town centre. Um, in that journey, um, we hit the the issues with, with COVID and all of a sudden everything got sort of thrown up in the air. So quite early on in the pandemic, we made a conscious effort um, we, well, we, made, we made a conscious decision that it was obvious that whatever the aftermath of COVID was, the economy wouldn't be the same in Merthyr, in the region and in Wales. So combined with the journey that we were on and the improvement process that we were going through with the, uh, with the board which was established uh, 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 to assist us, we combined those those two pieces of work. We brought together the two consultants who were working independently at the time to look at a process where we could start mapping out 
what the what the potential effects on the economy of COVID would be and how we could de develop a plan to actually take us take us out of that process. So we combined the economic recovery um, and the economic recovery agenda with the work in life agenda, which obviously was um, was a part of our community planning process at the time to come up with with a new model. Now, when we looked at the uh, the, the the recovery coming out of that process, um, we needed to. Someone must have pulled the plug in. Ali goes to it. Yeah, it's gone, sir. <laughs> he, he, uh, froze, he froze you, and he disappeared. Okay. Um, if he come, if he comes back in, he will probably pick it back up. Do you want me to? Alan yes. was handed to me, and just give give a little bit more context, really, about what Alan said. So, is that okay, Chair? Yeah. Or do you just want to wait a couple of minutes, see if he surfaces? No, I'm happy if you do. To, right. to go into it. So, I'm hoping this one is going to be a little bit more upbeat than the last report, guys. Right. So we can leave close of play today, happy people. Right. But who knows? Right. Okay. So. Um, in in relation to this particular report, right? Um, as Alan was leading into, we've combined a couple couple of things here, right? Um, as you can see um, in the introduction, this is very much focused on um, working life and economic recovery in relation to the RTA plan, right? If Al if Alan comes back on, chair. Oh yes, yeah. Okay. Apologies, Chair, for, for some reason I dropped out. Yeah, um, it, if you carry on there, Chris, I'll catch, I'll, I'll catch back up with you. Right, okay. We wondered where the, the, the electric had gone up in toy now. <laughs> um, so in relation to um, the working life economic, economic recovery theme of the RTA plan, right, um, four, four zero, right, gives an over, overview of those four themes, right? And the point Arlene was making there is realigning an old economic growth strategy to now a new economic recovery plan, the creation of a board, right? And those four themes are depicted then in terms of a percentage completed at five. What I will say, we were very conservative in terms of developing a 50 year vision for the economy of Merthyrville, right, at 69%. Um, that mo has moved on to close to 80% now, and members, hopefully, on the 3rd of November, right, will be bring a report through to full council on our um, economic recovery plan journey and signing off of the plan, right? So that, that's why that percent is a little bit low. We've done a little bit of work since, um, since we completed the report, so we are quite close to creating creating the plan in the next um, couple of weeks, you know, couple of months, right? So, so I think um, I think that that that's that's good. Most of the other percentages we feel are there thereabouts. We've created a new economic recovery board. There's a terms of reference. The board understand um, the relationship between the economic recovery plan and its uh, the board and the economic recovery group, right, and partnership. Which I think is detailed further further in, into into the report. Um, Chair, I think the pattern of the report flows basically in the following way, where we've listed the key challenges with each of the themes, and then we've listed out really how we've tried to overcome some of those key challenges. Um, you you'll be aware that there's been previous reports to scrutiny where we've honed in on the COVID response, right? And members will be aware the £40 million pound that we displaced in terms of the local economy through ERF 1 to 4 and our NNDR and things like the Valley's Task Force Outdoor Grant, those have been absolutely critical to this economy of Merthyr Tidwell, right? And to be honest, sir, it's amazing, absolutely amazing that we haven't seen many businesses go to the wall. We haven't, right? And 
you know, and I do think that's down to one the level of finance out of WG, but how we mobilised our internal teams as well to respond to that COVID response. And 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 I know we've spoken about that previously, but that that's always at the heart really of the journey, I think. Uh, throughout COVID in terms of our response. So it'd be remiss of me if I didn't if I didn't mention that particular particular opportunity. Um I won't I won't chair if it's okay with you, I, I won't go through all of the key challenges. I know members have read read the report and some of the things we've done uh to mitigate against some of the some of the, the challenges over the last um year. Um I think uh, move moving forward um and as Alan alluded to, um, what we try to do with this report is to um, bring into working life the new energy displaced within the commercialisation of uh, a new procurement and commercial commercial unit. And in our 6.6, we've drawn reference to the phases now that we are establishing um, over the next couple of weeks, couple of months. On that point, um, members might be aware we're out to recruitment at the moment for our commercial team. I know Paul Davis is on on the call today, and I don't know whether Paul actually wants to talk a little bit about Al, that that new entity really, which is a new opportunity uh, for the economy, really. well, for the council and the economy, I feel, because uh, yeah. that, that could be a big, big ticket for us guys. Yeah, brilliant. Thank, thanks, Chris. Apologies. I, I'm not sure what happened then. Um, I just, I just fell out of the meeting. Um, yeah, two key points. Chris has just sort of ended on uh, on the one about the commercialisation agenda. I think one of the one of the keys to bringing all this together for me was create was the creation of the um, um, of the board, which was made up of um, of senior politicians. Um, both from uh, both from the lead administration uh, and from the opposition, and uh, being able to feed this work into that board and get consensus um, and actually have dialogue about the best way forward for Murtha. The second thing, as Chris alluded to, is the simultaneous development of the commercialisation agenda. Uh, obviously, we've had we've had workshops and we uh, we had a we had a report. Uh, I think it was in it was in August, just before just before recess. So the next big thing for me is to bring together this particular work stream with the commercialisation work stream, so that we rewrite that uh, that section of, of, of the RTNI plan. Uh, and ask Paul, as Chris said, just to come in to give us a, a, an update on progress uh, because this is going to be a crucial element of um, of the work of this scrutiny committee, I think, going forward over the next three months. Paul? Thank you, Al. Thanks, Chair. Um, yeah, so we're at the start of a, of a quite a long journey in terms of commercialisation. Um, <clears throat> it's quite common across the country. You'll see that procurement departments have been rebadged as commercial departments simply because the money that we spend as a council in the course of our business is, is a large part of our, our commercial operations. So you, you think last year, last financial year, we spent 95 million as a local authority. Um, and it's it's using, using that spending power um, and buying power as well. To, to make some positive influences on the local economy. So I think I, I've, I've referred to it in, in, in the report in 6.8 around economic growth, and it's using our, our uh, the money that we spend to, to, to better influence our local economy. So look for opportunities where we can possibly direct um, additional spend locally, trying to make things easier to do that by um, changing thresholds within our procurement rules to reduce bureaucracy on some of the lower value spends that we do. Um, and also then we look at um, things like um, meet the buyer events and maybe sell into sell in Murtha guides. Um, but as I said, from, from our perspective in terms of procurement, we have to make it easier for the suppliers out there to be able to engage with us. There is a lot of bureaucracy associated with um, public sector procurement, unfortunately. Um, a lot of that is laid down in, in 
various acts and and law which we can't really avoid but you know there are ways to to make things easier by you know lotting things smaller and, and things like that to attract those uh, those businesses to us um and there's a lot of other things that that will come out of this as well in terms of decarbonization as well social value it's all it's all tied in with the with the commercial agenda um and we are literally at phase one at the moment putting that putting that unit together i'm li literally going through applications now to um to go out for interview within the next few weeks for the first two members of that um of that section um the commercial manager post is expiring 3rd of October. Um, so that will be the next stage then to appoint the commercial manager, obviously be leading on a lot of this. Um, so that's where we are now. Also, in terms of um, progress, something I've been doing mostly today as well, is that we're looking at our contract register, our spend, our local potential, and, and trying to link all these items together so that we can start doing that influencing now before the actual unit is fully resourced so that at least we can hit the ground running when when we get the resource in place and get them trained etc etc then there's there's obviously better opportunities for us to uh, to to do that as quick as we can um but it's but it's all obviously about building local wealth as well so that's where we are at the moment Thanks, Paul. So hopefully as we as we go through this journey together with scrutiny, you'll be able to uh, see the 15 year economic vision for Merthyr as as a, as a local authority being able to coordinate a lot of the economic determinants that need to come together and support for business in Merthyr um, and the use of our um, our local spend uh, our local procurement to bring all this together. So obviously we're not a private sector organization, but we have the power to coordinate lots of coordinate and uh, coordinate a lot of determinants of the economy. So to bring all this into one place um, and obviously to report back to this um, this scrutiny will hopefully show how we can make uh, a positive uh, and measurable difference in the economy of Earth. Thanks, Chair. Thanks, Ali. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Paul. Um, excellent report. It's a bit more cheerful than the previous one, so I'm happy with that. Um, any questions? No. Um, most of my questions, Chris answered. Um, the what one question that it came up before um this is to do with the forward work program um this is not really a question but it, um we discussed about maybe having a report on the city deal and other uh, the city application sorry and how that might impact on on something like this um whether we could we could have a report in november's meeting Sorry, I'm jumping again on agenda items here. I don't, and and maybe the kickstart in in December, because that's that's highlighted within this document as well. And I think it's coming up to a six month, six month period now. And you know we can have a chat, you know, a report on how that's been, and you know have they gone on to future employment and the qualifications and stuff. Is that something, Al? Yeah, thanks, Jay. I'd probably go kickstart first because. Um, Obviously, Debbie's uh, Debbie's been working with uh, with departments in the council and also with partners around Kickstart. So I think um, I think a progress update um, and progression of participants would be would be good in November, Deb, because we find that some of the process clunky. So you might want uh, you might want to take a bit of how perhaps we can advise our local uh, contacts in DWP of how that can be streamlined um i think you you might also want to consider how potentially the um the work of the valley's task force which has come to come to a halt um might be might be focused in the future to assist us going forward in murtha and the south wales valleys which might be is something that myself and chris and the team 
I've discussed at length over the last um, the last months, because obviously one of the most successful programs that myself and Chris were involved with was the Heads of the Valley program back in the daily, which yeah. you probably yeah, you probably remember. Yeah. And perhaps now now's the time for scrutiny to uh, to consider. Um, in the context of the of the first report that we had about the uh, the ending of um, of European funding, what needs to be put in place, or what needs to be advised uh, from this council should be put in place uh, to to perhaps look at another regional program which sits as a sub regional program within the heads of the valleys. Uh, sorry, within City Deal. Okay, great. You know, in 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 ter- I, yeah, I I got my words mixed up, but in terms of the, I think Malcolm is going to raise the point that uh, I was just about to say. Mal, do you want to come in here? Yeah, thanks, Chair. Yeah, I think the reason why we was um, interested in the city status bid in November is because the meeting in December is after the bid would have had to been put in, but I don't know if it's appropriate or possible for you to us give us an update in November. Um, but I think if we were going to look at it, it would have to be in November rather than December. Yeah, sorry, Mark. I was talking about City Deal, not... Uh, um, yeah, not it's my yeah. fault. I said uh, City Deal and then, yeah, I did try to change my words. Yeah, sorry, my fault. Yeah, no problem. I mean, we can give whatever whatever yeah. update, but perhaps we want to take stock uh, after Special Council next Tuesday um, about the way forward for scrutiny. Yeah, I mean, obviously, we've got to decide if we're going to head with the with the bid or not yet so okay um any other questions regarding um deb so, sorry just just the point about the kickstart report we do we probably do our first lever around the third week of october um so you know we yeah, yeah. Well, by all means, a progress report, but it, it it would be light on on detail of people transitioning into alternative employment, um, the other end of it. So we'd see more of a throughput of that sort of coming through November, December time. Yeah, I think that did be my Deb. Just uh, just to make a make a comment on the on the process because yeah. if we're going to see economic slumps going forward for whatever reason. Um, then I think this type of uh, this type of economic supply side kickstart program needs to be a bit smoother. Without a doubt, it's been um, it it has been and continues to be an interesting journey because it's um, we're struggling to fill the positions. It's unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess lots of people are still on furlough, and you know it's going to be difficult now with furlough coming to an end, where the people will actually want to go back to work as well. It's going to be a difficult period over the next few months, I guess. Um, no other questions? Oh, Maria? Thank you, Chair. It's only just to clarify now, because we've had discussions around um, the work programme moving forward. At the moment, on the November meeting, we have um, housing and homelessness. So am I correct in saying that we're adding in a report on uh, the city status, yeah. It depending on yeah yeah I I'd say yes they it, what no <laughs> yes I it depends on what happens in full council or not yeah. Right, so I won't take yeah, any let's... action in relation to the to the city status for the time being. Yeah. We'll revisit the topic. I'll contact you after next week's meeting. Yeah, and then we can have a dialogue as to whether it would be appropriate to add it to the work program. Yeah, so I see it. Yeah, yeah. On the uh, on the city status, if you were at traffic like now, you'd be on amber, Maria. Okay. So just stay on that for a minute. Okay. And and then um and then kickstart for for December. Yeah. Okay, that's fab. Thank you. Yeah. Um. Sorry, chair. Can I, as always, I, I need to thank Maria for her support in helping us pull these reports together. Right, because obviously Maria's Maria was actually involved in some of those early two thousand four, five, six projects. Actually, so her intel and experiences were tremendous. Deb in pulling all this together for us for the knowledge 
And I was you know, remiss of me if I didn't mention Maria in all of our scrutiny meetings because we couldn't have pulled those reports together without a great asset and support to my team. Thank you, Maria. Thanks, Chair. I'd just like to second that, Chair. Okay. Well, I'd like to third it because uh, she's invaluable to me as well. So um, thank you, Maria, for your support. Um, any comments on this report? No, Chris, do you want to come back in? No, sorry, sorry, Chair. Ah, uh, sorry, I'll lay you off. No one, no one. I um, so I I know we've moved on to it. Um, uh, agenda item uh five, committee committee work program. Um, there's one thing we did discuss doing a co-production um exercise around homelessness and housing. It was left with Andrew. Um. I'm going to have to pick that back up with him. What, what I've chatted with Maria is um, we'll we'll run with it as it is and then maybe do the co-production stuff and maybe bring housing and homelessness back in towards the end of the calendar year. Is that, does that sound OK? Yeah. Everybody else? We have moved on to it. I do agenda five, by the way. So um, yeah, is that OK with everyone? Yeah. You guys are, you, I'm happy for you to go now, officers, if, if, I, if that's what you want to do. I know you're busy. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank, thank you for the reports. It's been excellent. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. fabulous. Thanks, guys. Take care. Okay. So, so, sorry, I, I, morphed, I morphed like three agenda items in the one. They just, I thought they just followed in with especially with the city status and uh, the kickstart program is that okay yeah in in terms of um moving forward i'll i'll speak to i'll have, i'll chat with maria this week or next week and i'll chat with andrew regarding the um the co-production around homeless and less and housing i think it would be beneficial to us to do that exercise and to get all the rsls together um, you know, I still, you know, nobody's doing this kind of work, so I think it would be excellent for us to to lead on that. Um, has anybody got any comments around, around that? No. All right. Okay. Um, item agenda six: scrutiny, referrals, and feedback. I I don't have any, Maria. None of which I'm aware, Chair. Okay. Uh, item agenda seven, reflection and evaluation of meeting. Um, sorry, I, I, I probably speeded it up a little bit today. It was uh, quite a quick one, um, but I think it went well. I think it'll be interesting to see where the European monies and the new programmes are going to come from. Um, you know, it's, it's quite frightening. Um, is is Geraint you here? Uh, right, I was going to ask him his, his thoughts. Um, any thoughts around that for you guys? I think my mentality is the same as yours, Chair. It's a fact that obviously I know you personally, you've had dealings with the European funding for you know for years and years and years gone. And obviously, you know from experience I have as well as a young person coming through to where I am now. And yeah, it's harrowing. Scary, very scary. Yeah, well, yeah. I'll just give you some context. It, it came up in, I, I'll come to you now, two seconds. And I, I um, in terms of the Community Renewal Fund programme, I spent quite some time writing that application. It was due in on the 18th of June. We were promised an answer by the end of July. That my timeline was to start at the end of July recruiting. And we we're in 21st of September and I still haven't heard. So um, I'm already three months nearly behind my timeline and the project is supposed to be delivered by the end of March. And, you know, and it's 90 percent revenue, so it's not like capital. I can just go buy something. This is, you know, this is revenue money. It's, it's, I, I just don't see how it's deliverable anymore. So um, um, were you waiting on says awfully UK government? UK government, no Welsh government, UK. No, they, 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 by, they bypassed Welsh government. They came they came straight to local authorities and they, they set a um, hundred local authorities that are objective one areas 
um, that they wanted to work with, three million per local authority. I think there were six projects went in from Merthyr and um, it, it mainly around um, training and uh, job creation. So it, it's a lot of money in a short space of time, but you had to you had to put your hat in the ring to get you know to get the the, the funding, the leveling up, and the pros shared prosperity funders coming behind it. So um, it's 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 really you know everybody's in the dark regarding this. So so who set they set the timeline for it as well, did they? Yeah. So yeah. it's not like for them to set a timeline for you, but mm. they don't follow the timeline to, to get the funding out on whatever. Yeah, well, you know, it's disgusting. It's great. Uh, I, I, um, I, th I, I think that they set the timeline and just didn't think that ministers would be on recess, and then you know they're on recess end of July and August, and then now they've come back yeah. and then they've just you know uh, underestimated the level, like Alan said. So, um. I did hope that we would have heard this week or last week, but then it's still, they're still going to have to turn around and say, right, we're going to give you an extra, you know, three months to deliver that. Did you say, is there any inkling? There's no inkling on that yet that they'll give you an extra three months or whatever, because as you say, you, you haven't got the time to do, um, I think, to do anything, like, I, you know. You know, I've got, a, in terms of my the project I'm involved in, I've got, a, I've got a, you know, advertise for jobs. I've got to pull that out there. They could have, a month's notice, you know, that's two yeah, or three months right. down the line. So like I'm meeting with partners, so everything's ready to go, but it's, it's still it's still hard work. Andrew, yeah, did you want to anything to because uh, you don't know if the how long that funding is gonna take. So nobody can commit to anything, can they? You no. know, it's not fair, like it's no and and this is what's happening with the leveling up and shared prosperity fund. There's no indication when that's gonna come, what it's gonna look like, who's yeah. gonna manage that. It's just, you know, it's people livelihoods now and, you know, they're going to have to start making. All the European funding obviously is coming, come to an end now. That should have been in place now. You know, it should be rolling on, shouldn't it? You know, it's, it's ridiculous, and, like. And they're going to have to, they're, they're going to have to make, um, give redundancy notices in the next few months. Those yeah. people are going to leave the council. So all our knowledge and, uh, is is just gonna is gonna leave us the local authority. So it's 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 not good times ahead for the next few months. I don't think. But look at that. You know, we've got what she say. Was they say? I think 72, 72 possible redundancies, which is a lot. You know, those people could go, and then perhaps three or four months after they have gone, they come out. They say, "Well, you are. There's all this funding you can have." You know, there's no uniformity or nothing, is there? You know, there's nothing like. Yeah, you've also got to factor in the fact that obviously 72 direct people are going to be affected, you know, yeah. from our authority. But then you've got to think of people within our authority who are working in other authorities who are going to their jobs for the same thing. So we could be talking, you know, up in the four figures for people who are going to lose their jobs, you know, who are Merthyr residents and you know, Merthyr Tidville residents. And so it's, it's going to have a much bigger impact than just 72 people. But yeah, yeah. no, I, it's ridiculous how the. the the timeline has been completely, you know, mismatched. Definitely. Uh, sorry, my mate. So, yeah, I, you know, I think my question in there that um, with key partners, so there's many key partners that are in the same boat of this, because so that 72 could be, could be double that. So, oh, yeah. um, you know, and we, we're a small local authority. So, you know, in RCT, that might be three times that size. So, That's um, right, yeah. Yeah, Andrew, you had you had your hand up earlier. Did you want to? Do you want to come in? Yeah, it was just a brief comment, really. That um, I remember back this this all started when I was in year six, and I'm now in year eleven. Uh, I was I was actually ten when uh, when this all started, and it's quite. Uh, it was just when I was reading the the document, but here yeah, uh, it's it's quite astounding to see that so much hasn't been. Has, has not only been delayed, but it's just not been able to, uh, the, the information that we need hasn't been produced. Um, and I, I just I just think it's crazy, really, that uh, <laughs> I was so young when it started and now I'm able to have an active, active say almost as such. I, I agree, it's, it, you know, it, it's been a long time coming and um, 
you know, it did take a while for him to strike a deal, but um, you know, it has been come in and it was a date set and you know nobody seems to know where it's going. So I think it's watch your space over the next couple of months. So Okie doke. Um it's probably on the back burner now Lee because of COVID. Uh, That's the excuse. Yeah. Well they lose something, yeah. I can see. Um, right, okay. Um, item agenda eight, any other business? I don't have any. Um, I'd like to, if there's no other further business, I'd formally like to bring this meeting to a close.